Away! A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high yo silver. The Lone Ranger. In the early days of the Western United States, unscrupulous traders sold the Indians whiskey. Under its influence, they raided, plundered, and killed. Whole communities were wiped out. The white settlers might have been driven from the territory if the masked rider of the plains had not struck at the root of the trouble. He captured the traders, brought them to justice, and stamped out their lawless traffic. It was the Lone Ranger who made it possible for Indian and white man to live side by side in peace. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! The Indians have struck at Pine Creek. We've got to hurry. Hello, Silver! Away! <laughs> Jagged lightning streaked across the evening sky. Rain fell in torrents and the wind howled across the desolate countryside. Since early afternoon, the Lone Ranger and his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, had fought their way through the storm. They reached the hill country shortly after nightfall, and now, by the fitful glare of the lightning, they could see the rocky trail rise steeply before them. The storm is getting worse, Kimosabe. Ah! And if the footing gets much more difficult, we'll have to dismount. We ride further. It gets better. How much further is that shelter you mentioned? Maybe it's three miles now. A cave? Not cave. Place where rocks make shelter. I see. Oh, Silver. Oh, 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 oh. What matter? I thought I saw something moving. What do you see? I don't know. Maybe it's wolf. We're ahead of us and up above a little. Wait until there's another flash of lightning. We may see it again. Ah. There. Do you see it? Now it would look to me like two people on foot. That's right. And they were running. Yes, there they are again. It's a man and a woman. Ah. Hello there. I'm not answer. They may not be able to hear me over the storm. Come, Tonto. We'll give them a hand. Ah. Watch out for the rocks. It's bad going here. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Careful, old fellow. See anything of them, Tonto? It's dark. We're heading in the right direction. The next flash will show them again. Uh. There they are. Hold on there. We won't harm you. Oh, Silver. Oh, Scout. Oh, oh. 
Grandpa. We saw you running. We thought you needed help. You ain't from... Don't talk, Grandpa. Who did you think we were? I... It's all business. You come from near... Who's that? Grandpa, it's Scott. We gotta run. It sounds as though men are hunting you. This is none of your affair. Let us go. You can't get away from those men. You can only get to the top of the hill, then you'll have to give up. We'll take that chance. Is the law after you? The law. Don't tell anything, Grandpa. Come on, fellas. I can't see much farther. Into the saddle. Let us go. Those men are on foot. Tonto and I'll get you out of here. We'll find out the trouble afterwards. Oh, yeah. I said into the saddle. Not before it's too late. Jen, we'll ride double. You get in the saddle with Tonto. It's all we can do. Hurry. Give me a hand. Here. Hip. Right, yes. There's something up this way, men. I think I see some horses. Come on, get on, scout. They're riding away. Where did you get the horses? Didn't know horses could travel this country. Bring them down. They're on a side. Can't see the aim. What do we do now, boss? It don't matter if they did get away. They won't talk. Tell the fellas to get their horses at the bottom of the hill and head back for the ranch. All right, boss. Come on, Hank. their horses over the treacherous footing, the Lone Ranger and Tonto continued until they came to the shelter Tonto had mentioned. It was shielded from the storm by a broad shelving rock formation. And as Tonto pointed it out, the masked man drew Silver to a halt. Oh, Silver. Oh, oh boy. Oh, Scout. Oh, yeah. oh Scout. This will do for tonight. That man, the Indian, who are you? That doesn't matter. Tonto, huh? See if you can find some wood and start a fire. Uh huh? Do that. We ain't thank you yet for getting us clear of them fellas. Why were they after you? I'm sorry, we can't tell them. You can tell who they were? No, we can't. There's no use hiding who it was. I heard Ann mention the name of Scar. There's a rancher by the name of Scar Lathrop from the valley just below here. He's the man who was after you. We ain't talking. All Tonto and I wish to do is to help you if you're in trouble. Why should you wish to help us? Does there have to be a reason? Ain't nobody does anything for nothing. You're mistaken. You can't represent the law, not wearing that mask. I'm on the side of the law, however. We don't know that. You'll have to take my word for it. Stranger, there's just one way you can help me and Ann here. Yes? And that's by forgetting what you've seen. Own about your own business like you never met up with us. I mean it. Just clean forget us. I believe I understand what's troubling you. You can't. You can You're never... afraid of Scar, and yet something's happened that makes you afraid to go to the law. Isn't that right? Please don't question us any further. Just take our word for what we say. You can't help us even if you wanted to. It could only make matters worse. If I knew your problem, I might agree with you. I'll be able to point out where you're mistaken. No. But as you refuse to tell me, I'll have to find out for myself. What are you aiming to do? I feel sure the man you mentioned is Scar Lathrop. I had reason to make inquiries about the people in this district. He's the only fellow called Scar that I've heard of around here. But, if it was Scar we rode away from, he's probably returned to his ranch by now. You, you ain't going there, are you? I am. No, please, you can't. This is our affair. If it was entirely your affair, I might listen to you. As I told you, I had my own reason for coming to this section. Investigating Scar Lathrop is part of my purpose. I'd have done that whether I'd met you or not. Oh, Grandpa, if he learns about Dick... Hi, Scar. Dick? I didn't mean to mention. Your name's Ann. Now I think I know who you are. You're Ann Barlow, and you're Jed Barlow. Dick must be your brother, Ann. He operates a wagon trading company to Oak Grove. Uh, how do you know about us? You started the company, Jed, and turned it over to your grandson about a year ago. Uh, that's who we are, all right. I know more about the people around here than you may realize, Jed. There's a chance that I know your trouble. You do? I'll tell you about that later. Father, you've got a good fire started. Is there plenty of fuel on hand? Uh... I have plenty more. Me find wood under ledge. It not get wet there. Good. Dead, you and Ann can dry yourselves out here. Tonto and I are riding. But, but we don't wish to stay. I'm afraid you haven't much choice. Oak Grove is a long trip on foot. The storm isn't letting up yet. But we... Stay here until we return and we'll see you get home. I don't want you to leave until I've had another chance to talk to you. If I learn anything at Scar's place, you may be more willing to tell me the truth of this. If you just keep out of this... I'm sorry, but it can't be done. Here, Silver. Call Scout Tonto. Here, Scout. Remember, don't leave this place. If you do, you won't get far without horses. We'll catch you again easily. Maybe, maybe the masked man's working for Scar after all. If he is, we're done for, Ann. But I'm not. Ready, Tonto? Uh -huh. Me ready. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Get him up.
Carl Lathrop's ranch house nestled in the broad valley at the base of the hill where the masked man and Tonto had found shelter. Scar and his men had returned, unsaddled their mounts, then made their way through the mud of the yard to the house. Inside, Scar angrily slammed the door behind him. Blasted luck. Rip, it was you who let that girl and the old man get away. I told you to keep an eye on them. Yeah, they sneaked out when you sent me over to the bunkhouse. And you shouldn't have left them alone without tying them. I suppose it's my fault because you had friends to help them, too. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder who it was they rode off with. If it was the law, It we... wasn't. We can't be sure. All right, what if it was? Not knowing what'll happen to the girl's brother, they ain't going to talk. Just the same, I'd like to know who they met up with. And so would I. But it ain't going to bother me. Rip. Yeah? Bring young Barlow out here. Now, if he's got away while we was gone, you better start making tracks. Don't worry. That fella couldn't have got loose. He better not. Go on out here. Untie me first. Yeah, just a second. Hurry it up. Wait a second. Wait a second. There. You're going to walk. Your hands are staying tied. Come on. Scar, who was that you had in here a while back? Jed and your sister. Why, you... But they got away. I'm glad of it. When they get here with the law, you fellas are going to be in a fix you won't be able to talk your way out of. They won't be going to the law. What makes you think they won't? They wouldn't want to see you hung for selling fire water to the Indians, would they? Selling liquor to Redskins? Why, I never did. I got proof that says you had. That ain't so. You couldn't have. No. Say, now I know what you meant when you mentioned that wagon you got hit over in the bottoms. It's got a load of liquor. I'll bet anything you... Why, you're the fellas that have been selling to the Indians. (laughs) Maybe so. You try and make trouble for me, and it's you the law's going to blame. How come? Never mind that. Jed and your sister savvy's all right. I brung them here to tell them why they'd better keep their mouths closed. I was figuring on holding them till you came around to my way of looking at things. They're getting away, spy all that. But I still got a good way to persuade you. What are you getting at? You're in charge of old Jed's freight line, ain't you? Well, what if I am? Well, we need you in our business. Huh? You mean you want me to help sell to the Redskins? Yes, so. Dick? What we got to have is a way of getting the liquor here without being suspicioned. We've been bringing it through the hills from Avoca, but that ain't going to do no more. The law down that way is getting suspicious of it. But I'm not going out of the way finish. You got that freight line. Nobody ever suspicion you of being in cahoots with a fellow selling liquor. So from now on, that's how the liquor is coming here. In your wagon. Like fun it is. Uh, there's good cash for you in it. Cash for what? For getting the Indians loco on rot gut whiskey? How was them settlers over by Pine Creek killed a couple of weeks ago? By Redskins that had been drinking till they went clear crazy. And they wasn't the only killings on account of liquor. <laughs> Shucks. It ain't our fault that them Indians do, is it? Selling them liquors the same as murder, and you know it. Then you're figuring on turning us down, huh? You blame right I am. And as soon as I get loose from here, I'm telling the sheriff what I know. <laughs> yeah? And just what do you know? You've just admitted the business you're in. Uh-huh. But you go to the sheriff and tell him that, and we'll deny saying any such thing. The fact is, we'll show them where maybe you had reason to throw suspicion away from yourself. What's that? <laughs> it kind of made you set up and take notice, didn't it? Oh, why would I be suspicious? It'd look mighty funny to the sheriff if he was to find a letter addressed to you from one of the big liquor companies in St. Louis, wouldn't it? Well, how could he? <laughs> well, the fact is, Hank here used your name the last time he rode east. Hank used your name and gave the post office over to Avoca for your address. <laughs> So the liquor company wrote back thanking you for that big order you gave me. You see, uh, you're not being known in the Boca made it easy for us. That's the lowest scheme I ever heard of. Maybe so, but it'll turn the trick. Where's that letter now? (laughs) A place where you won't know about till it's too late. Unless you get sensible and throw in with us. I'll never throw in. Someone shot the lamp out. Jump in through the window. You can't see nothing. Yeah, who's this? That's me. Let me go. He's going out the door. I got him. Who'd you hit? Where's Dick? Light another lamp or we'll see. Hurry up. I am to find out just who that polecat is. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. continue our story. Young Dick Barlow was being threatened by the crooked rancher Scar Lathrop and his men. Suddenly, the lamp was shot out. Someone leaped into the room and the group was thrown into confusion. 
Scar, firing at someone near the door, believed he had hit the intruder. Rip, hurriedly lighting another lamp, was the first to discover Scar's mistake. Hey, it was Hank you drilled. Well, I'll be... Why, why couldn't you make sure where you were shooting? Gosh, Hank, I seen the door open and somebody over this way, and I just... just... trying to stop him. That's right, Scar. Dick Scar, too. Oh, hey, you hear that? Silver. That's the name of one of the horses that Jed and the girl got away on. Will I have the boys take after him? Yeah, what's the use? By the time they saddle up, they never find the trail. Close that door, it's raining in here. Yeah, you might have killed me. How bad hit are you? I don't know, it's, it's my leg. Yeah. Yeah, just a flesh wound. That ain't so bad. Easy enough for you to say. Shucks, I've been hit worse than that a dozen times. You get a bandage on that, and it shouldn't even keep you from walking. Well, what are we going to do about Dick? What about that fella that took him away? Well, finish with Dick. You, you mean we ain't going to use his freighters? Not a chance. Now that he's loose, the first thing he'll do is run to the sheriff. Yeah, he can't prove nothing. He knows that last wagon load of liquor is down the bottoms. We gotta send Blackie and Lamb to move it. You can hide it in the thickets near the marsh. Yeah. What time is it? Huh? What do you want to know the time? I said, what time is it? About ten. And we can still get to town before the sheriff's office closes. Go to town now? Yeah, and you're going along. We're still storming out. We are it with a little rain. Planted that letter from the liquor company like I told you, didn't you? Sure I did. Well, we're going to see that the sheriff finds out about it before Dick can get in his story. With him jail, the law won't be watching things so close for a spell. We'll be able to run a few more loads through for the cleanup. Then lay low again till things have quieted down. Uh-huh. Now, do like I told you. Send Blackie and Lamb to move the wagon. Then you saddle up our horses again and bring them to the front. Jump, blast it! We got things to do, and they've got to be done in a hurry. In the meantime, with Silver carrying double for the second time that night, the Lone Ranger sent the powerful white stallion toward the shelter where he had left Ann Barlow and her grandfather, Jed. Oh, Silver. Oh, fella. Oh, boy. He got away. Oh, the masked man done it. <laughs> I wasn't sure you people would be here. Where would we go to? We'd be the rest of the night walking to town. Say, where's the engine that left with you? He'll be along presently. Sis, how did Scar get a hold of you and Grandpa? One of his men came to the house and said you sent for us. He said you've been hurt and they were taking care of you at Scar's place. Yeah, then when I come home, I got the same kind of message saying you and Grandpa sent for me. But what I can't figure is why they kept us apart when they had all three of us at the house. They likely thought they could do more with you if you were separated. Together, you might be more willing to hold out against them. Uh, I suppose. You heard why they had me? Not much. Only enough to know that it had something to do with selling liquor to the Indians. The skunks. But, but now, that letter. Oh, golly, I near forgot. What letter? I didn't hear that. But they got a letter planted someplace to make it look like I was in on their crooked game. If the sheriff finds it, I'm finished. And so that's why you refuse to explain anything. You, you won't go to the sheriff, will you? Of course not. You see, we didn't know what to do. If you was a crook like the mask seemed to make you, then maybe you'd use any information you got to hold us up. You think I'm a crook? Well, I wouldn't be so ready to say so now as I would have been at first. I'm not. But you see, if you was on the side of the law, like you claim, then that'd be just as bad. Once the law sees that letter, Dick will be jailed for sure. It's possible we'll be able to prove that Scar is guilty of selling the liquor. Which same don't help me any. Proving them guilty don't prove I ain't. That's true. And now Scar will see that the sheriff finds that letter. I know he will. Why couldn't you have let us alone as we asked? What would you have done if I hadn't interfered? Well, I would. Would you have allowed Dick to give Scar and his gang the help they asked for? We certainly wouldn't have. You think I'd play a hand in that kind of a dirty game? Don't you think I know what fire water does to engines? Very well, then. If you had refused to help them, things would have been the same. They'd still use that letter against you. You're no worse off now than you were before. The masked fellow's right. Well... You have no idea where the letter can be? Not a notion. It's probably been hidden in your home or your place of business. So when it's found, things will look worse for you. You have an office, haven't you? Sure. If you've ever been in Oak Grove, you've seen it. That means there's just one thing we can do. Yeah? We might take steps to keep Scar from getting in touch with the sheriff. If we could, there'd still be the danger that one day the letter would be found accidentally. Well, what do you think can be done? Let Scar tell the sheriff about the letter. Huh? But, but we can't. That's just what we're trying to stop. We've got to know where the letter is in order to destroy it. It's up to one of us to be on hand when Scar and the sheriff meet. And then what? And then before the sheriff can actually see the letter, it must disappear. The sheriff's office is just one block from our office. And only a little farther from our home. There would never be time. I think there's a way it can be done. How? It'll depend on Tonto. We've got to wait until he returns. Will he be along soon? He should be. I left him behind at Scar's place. Well, what was the idea of that? Scar and his men heard us right away. They'd have no reason to believe anyone stayed behind. 
Perhaps Santa will overhear information we can use. Say, that was a slick scheme. I've been wondering about something. Yes? You said you had a reason for being in this district. You seem to know a lot about the people here. I came I... here to put a stop to the very thing we've been discussing. Selling liquor to the engine? Yes. The sheriff and Avoca laid a trap for Scar. Scar got away without being recognized after killing two deputies. The sheriff believed that Scar fled in the other direction. I had an idea that he might have doubled back and come here. From what I'd been able to learn of the liquor traffic, it seemed to be centered in this district. Nobody around here ever suspected Scar. But things must have been getting tough for him. That's why he needed Dick to help. If he forced Dick to help just once, that's all Scar would have needed. Dick would have been too far involved to draw back after that. Somebody's coming now. It's probably Tonto. It's him, all right. Now we can go into action. Tonto reported the little he had been able to overhear at the ranch house. Then, following the masked man's instructions, sent Scout swiftly towards Oak Grove. Oak Grove was also the destination of Scar and his henchman, Rip. As they rode, the storm became less violent, and by the time their mounts clattered down Oak Grove's main street toward the office of the sheriff, the stars were shining, and the only sign of the recent rain was the water underfoot. There's still a light in the office, Scar. Sheriff's in, all right. Yeah. You got your story straight now? Sure. See that you don't slip up on it. Here we are. Oh, there. Oh, oh, oh boy. Oh. Come on. I'm with you. Sheriff! Walk in. Oh, evening, fellas. Something on your mind? Sheriff, uh, Rip here's got something to tell you. We figured you ought to know. Yeah? Go ahead and tell him, Rip. Sheriff, I was over to Avoca today. And I've seen something that's given me a doggone good idea who the polecat is that's been selling the Redskins liquor. What was that? A letter young Dick Barlow called for at the post office. Dick there. Barlow? Yeah, a letter from a distillery down in St. Louis. But, but what would Dick be getting that kind of a letter for? And why would he get it at the Boca instead of here? Can't you make a guess? I could make one, but not without knowing something more about this. I ain't told it all yet. Well, go on. He dropped the letter and I picked it up. He got so excited when he seen me reaching for it that I wondered what he had to hide. So I gave the letter a quick look, and believe me or not, Sheriff, it was Rip thanking him for all the liquor he'd ordered. Uh, I don't get this. Don't you see it, Sheriff? Dick's the varmint that's been bringing liquor here for the engines. He's got a perfect setup with that freight line of his and all. And if that letter wasn't something he wanted to hide, why did he have it sent to Avoca? Where is that letter now? I'll have to see it for myself before I'll believe it. Uh, sure, I know you'd say that, Sheriff. That's why I followed Dick back home. You followed him, you say? And seen where he hid that letter. I can show you where it is right now. Why didn't you come to me before with this? Uh, working for me like he does, Sheriff. Uh, Rip thought we ought to talk it over first. But just as soon as I heard about it, I said he would come right back to town to tell you. Gosh, it don't seem no ways possible that Dick could be mixed up in that kind of a low-down business. I'll show you the proof. Well, if the letter says what you claim, I reckon it'll be proof enough. You sure you can find it? I seen him slip it under a corner of their setting room rug. It's there, all right. He left the house right afterwards, and I'm doggone sure he ain't been back since. Come on, let's get right over there. Lead the way. Hey, that engine must have been just outside your window, Sheriff. And look, he's heading towards a bar, old place. Maybe he's walking for Dick. Hurry up. If he's heard about that letter, he'll try to get it first. And we can't give him the chance to get rid of it. Tonto, with only a few seconds start on the sheriff, Scar and Rip, burst into the Barlow house and hastily searched beneath the rug for the incriminating letter. The letter was gone when his pursuers entered. The sheriff ordered an intensive search, but nothing was found then. Blast it, sheriff. That letter must be somewhere around. The redskin couldn't have swallowed it. Not in the time he had. Come on, engine, talk. Where's that letter? What'd you do with it? Tonto, not know what you talked about. Oh, give me that. I ought to... Take it easy, Rip. I'm in charge here. Doggone, he's got to know where that letter is. Uh-huh. If there was one. If there was one? What do you mean by that? You think I lied about it? Now, quiet down. Let's figure this thing out. If there was a letter, like you said, there's only so many things could have happened to it. We've searched everywhere. That's what I'm getting at. We've already agreed the Indian didn't have time to swallow the letter. On top of that, he'd been searched from head to heel. And if he'd burnt the letter, there'd be sign of ashes around. But there ain't. 
And I don't think he had time enough for that either. Yeah, if the letter ain't here, it ain't here, and that's all there is to it. But I'm willing to bet whatever you care to name that the engine knows what become of it. And, Sheriff, no matter what you say, we're going to make him talk. He don't look to me like the talking kind. Are you sure you looked all through that old desk over there? Sure did. Hmm. How about that bow, that quiver full of arrows hanging on the wall? Shucks, I looked them over myself. Emptied all the arrows out and looked inside. Wasn't nothing there. Well, I can't think of any place else where maybe didn't look. You fellas can take it any way you like. But all I got to say is this. If the letter had been here, we'd have found it. We didn't. So it's likely never been here. That's a doggone look. Come on. Who's there? Here is a prisoner for you, Sheriff. A wagon load of contraband whiskey. A masked man. And he's got Blackie, Hank, and Lem. And Dick, with a sister and old Jed. Yeah, you rotten crooks. We're here with the goods on you. The whiskey. Rip, don't move. You! I warned you. Put those men under arrest, Sheriff. What's this all about? Things are happening too doggone fast around here for me. This wagon and the whiskey in it belong to Scar. We found Blackie and Lem moving into a grove of trees near the marsh beyond their place. They were trying to hide it. Is that the truth? And Jed and Dick are all witnesses. They were along when the capture was made. We returned to Scar's ranch house, picked up Hank, and went on to town. That's right, Sheriff. Then that explains it. Explains what? Why Scar and Rip came here with that fishy story of theirs. About Dick getting a letter proving he'd been buying whiskey. They was afraid and was trying to pin the blame on him. That might have been it. It isn't so. You can't prove anything against us. That's your wagon, ain't it? Yeah, but I tell and you. you come to me with that story you couldn't prove, didn't you? But listen, I'm I... done listening to you. Here's the whiskey. Here's witnesses whose word I'd take again yours any day and week. And over there's the jailhouse where you're a headed for. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can't do that. You boy. did as I told you, Tonto. He wrapped the letter around the shaft of an arrow and shot it from the window. Tonto, do that. Them not catch on. Good. <laughs> we'll pick it up on our way and see that it's burned. <laughs> Steady, Silver. Hey, stranger. Oh, Silver. Hey. Away. Come on, Silver, old fellow. The government needs our help in Iroquois Valley. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.